Hi guys, so in this video we're going to have a look at uh, transformations, but a little bit more uh, specifically reflection, okay? Um, so reflection is a type of transformations. There's four different types of transformation that we can do to shapes, uh, enlargement, rotation, translation, and reflection is what we're going to have a look at today. So I've got a couple of examples to show you and things to look out for. So the first one here, I've got my shape A, and I want to reflect A in the line x equals one, okay? So in this particular example, they haven't given you, I haven't given you the line to reflect it in. We've got to know what that is, okay? And it's really nice and easy. So x equals one, so I look to the x-axis, x equals one is here. So all I do is a nice vertical line going through there. I'm not gonna do it all the way because obviously my shape's just here and I'm reflecting in that line. So x equals 1. Why is that x equals 1? Well, every single x coordinate, whether it be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, every single x coordinate there has the value of 1. So we say that that has the equation, uh, this line has the equation x equals 1. Okay? So that's the first step, is to draw your mirror line on. And then obviously I want to reflect this shape. Now what I do is I turn my piece of paper round so that my mirror line or my line of reflection is horizontal to me and then that way I can just draw a vertical line so I've got two lines that are then perpendicular to each other like so. The reason why I do that is when you get your tracing paper and you're entitled to tracing paper in the exam so if you haven't got some make sure you do ask for it is that when you trace the shape and then your mirror line, you can then also trace that mark there. So when I lift up, I've got a cross. And that way, when you reflect it, so when you flip it over, you can line it up exactly where you need to. So the cross is there. And then, obviously, I can take it away. And then if I forget where I need to go, very easy. I can just go back and line up my cross. And I know, yep, yeah, there's where one of the corners is. And yep, there's where I know the corner is. Okay, so by putting that point in, it just gives you a good point of reference so you can keep going backwards and forwards. And then obviously then you can draw it in like so. Okay, and then that shape there has been reflected in that line. I'm gonna call it B because the next bit here, reflect shape B in the line Y equals zero. So just like before, if X equals one, because it, it goes through the X axis at one, the line Y equals zero goes through the Y axis. So this is obviously the Y axis, this is the X axis. It goes through the Y axis at zero. Well, Y equals zero is here. So it's this line here. It's also known as the x-axis, which is what causes confusion sometimes. Sometimes I might say reflect it in the x-axis or y equals zero. So y equals zero is where the line crosses the y-axis at zero. It's also called the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to reflect this shape B that I've just done in that line there. So exactly the same thing. I'm going to make sure that my line is horizontal to me. It is. I'm going to draw a nice vertical line. I'm going to get my tracing paper, I'm going to trace the shape, there's my shape B, I'm going to trace the line of reflection and that little mark that I just made. Don't forget reflection, you flip the tracing paper, you do not rotate it, which is what some people do, you flip it and again line it up exactly and then I can tell where my points are going to be. And you can keep going back as much as you want because you've done your cross, which is why it's useful. And there we go, I've spotted it there. Join it up with a ruler. Call it C, the question might tell you what to call it. And just double check, so there it was. Now I flip it over, excellent, there we go. So they're nice sort of easy ones where they're nice vertical or horizontal lines. The next one I'm going to do is this one here, where it says reflect the shape A in the line Y equals X. Now, people always get confuzzled with Y equals X. Not to worry, it's nice and easy. If X equals 1, 
y equals 1 because y equals x. They're both equal to each other. So when x equals 2, y equals 2. And when x equals 3, y equals 3, and so on, 4, 4, 5, 5, 0, 0, and so on and so forth. So once you plot a few of those points, you can obviously then get your ruler and draw that line on. So this is just the line of y equals x. You might have known that from doing some graph work or something like that, but if you didn't, there you go. Now obviously this is a bit more tricky because it's a diagonal. Follow the same process. Turn your paper round so that that line is horizontal to you and anywhere on the line, I'll, I'll, I'll go here, you can then draw your vertical line. Get your tracing paper, trace the shape like so, trace your mirror line and then obviously the mark that you just made, remember flip it, don't rotate it, we flip it and then you can get it to be bang on there. So that's one corner. Keep going back as many times as you need to to check it. There we go. Okay, so there's your three points. I can join them up. Like so. Just do a quick double check. Yep. Yep, excellent. So that's how I would do diagonals. Turn your line so it's horizontal to you, put your vertical line in, and then just do exactly the same steps. So hopefully, the next question might ask you to label it B. B, there we go. Okay, hopefully that helps you with them. If I then turn my page over, you might get something that might throw you off. Don't be thrown off by this. It's just the examiner's way of testing whether or not you do know what you're talking about. So here's a shape. I'm going to reflect it in shape A, uh, sorry, reflect shape A in the line y equals 3. So remember, just like before in my previous examples, I'm looking at my y-axis. y is 3 is there, so it's a horizontal line going through that. There's my line y equals 3, and that's where I'm going to reflect it. And people get a little bit confused because obviously this shape goes through that line. But don't be put off by it, just do exactly the same thing. My line's already horizontal, so that's handy. Put your little vertical mark on, and then get your tracing paper out. So sketch the shape, like so. There's my mirror line with my mark that I just made. Flip it over, and there you go. So those two points are the same, but this point up here is different. There we go, so that one there, there, and there, so then you can just join it up like so. Okay, so let's just test it. That's what it was. Flipped it over. That's what it now is. Okay, so don't be put off if that line goes through it. You just do exactly the same thing, it just overlaps. Okay, the final thing that could be asked is something like this it says reflect shape A in the line x equals 1 and then do it in the line y equals 0. So there's two things we're doing here. Let's do the first one together. So the first one here, the line x equals 1. Sorry, I think that's meant to be minus 1, so I'm just going to quickly change that. Minus 1. Okay, so here we go then. There's the x-axis. There's x equals minus 1. So I'm going to draw my line down here. x equals minus 1. So again, I'm going to reflect the shape first. So there we go, turn it round, so that's horizontal. Put my little mark on it, grab my tracing paper. Quick sketch of my shape and the mirror line and my mark. Flip it over. And it's going to be there, there and there. Just double check, 100%, lovely job. So, Ruda, Ruda, Ruda. Okay, so there's the first bit done, where I've reflected the shape A in line X equals minus 1. And now I'm going to do this shape in the line Y equals 0. So again, Y equals 0 is going to be my X axis, just like in my previous example. So there's my mark, because my reflection line is already horizontal. 
quick sketch, mirror line with my mark, flipping it over. Oh, hang on, I've got too many on my tracing paper now, so it's this one. Give it a tick, that's the one I want. There we go. So it's going to go there, there, and there. Yep, excellent. Okay. Just check it. Lovely. Okay, and we call this shape B. So that would be like a part A of a question where you've got to do the two reflections. And then this bit here, I've seen this come up a few times now. The part B, it says describe the single transformation which maps A to B. So this shape to this shape. Now it's not reflection because obviously I've just done my two reflections, but I did that twice whereas it wants a single transformation. So remember, like I said at the start, we've got four choices. We've got reflection, rotation, enlargement, and translation. Now, if you're unsure of those four, I've done other videos, so you can check, but translation is when you move the shape and it doesn't change, doesn't flip or rotate or anything, in which case, it's definitely not translation, otherwise it would be this way around, not that way around. Enlargement is when the shape gets bigger or smaller. Well hasn't got bigger or smaller, so it's not going to be that one. Obviously, it's not reflection, so we're left with rotation. Now, this is where it gets a bit more interesting, because with rotation, as you saw in my previous video for rotation, or if you haven't, definitely give it a look, you've got to work out where the centre of rotation is. We also need to know how far it's rotated. So, let's have a little go at doing this. So I've got loads of pens here. I'm going to sketch my A, and then I'm going to see, there we go, so it's a rotation, it rotates round, like so. So when you're doing this, try and keep an eye of which bit stays more or less the same to try and spot where that centre of enlargement is. So I think it's going to be, well, where are we looking, I don't know, maybe about there. Let's give that a go. Does that work? No, it's a little bit too low, so I'm just going to go a bit higher. There. What about that one? Perfect. There we go. There's my centre of rotation, okay, which is at the point minus one, zero. So that's the first thing I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's a rotation for one mark around the point minus one, zero. And how far did it go? Well, let's just double check that. So just like my rotation video, I'll use a black pen so hopefully you can see it. You go over and across. So it's that's one turn. That's two turns. So two turns is 180 degrees. And I don't need to say whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise because if it's 180, it's the same either way, like I said in my rotation video. Okay, so that's what the sing single, just one transformation would be. I've rotated this shape to this shape around that point, minus one, zero, and it's 180 degrees. Okay, if it was 90 or 270, you'd need to say whether it was clockwise or anti-clockwise, but like I said, because it's 180, it doesn't matter. You don't need to say it. Uh, hopefully that helps, guys. Thank you.